Hi there, welcome to the Rose Hip Island YouTube channel. My name is Hannah and I record my videos from Northern Tasmania in Australia. My videos are normally all about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing of yarn and other fibre related creativity and making. I have been producing my videos since, since 2015 and this will be the first video that I make that is all about sewing. I thought it was about time. I have been doing a little bit of sewing on and off and you know that if you've been following me for a while but in the past three months or so I've got really into sewing and I finally put aside time to really explore more of my sewing and ways of doing things and overcoming some of those hurdles that I've had pr previously um, to feel comfortable with making and moving forward in sewing. So today, yes, it's all about sewing. Thank you so much for joining me. If you normally watch my knitting catch-ups, um, thank you so much for checking this video out. And even if you're not someone who normally sews or are very interested in it, you know, you're still welcome to watch this. It might be a bit of fun. It might provide a bit of inspiration. Um, you know, uh, keep watching and you'll see if it's something you will enjoy. If you are a new viewer and you found your way here because you're interested in sewing, welcome. And again, thank you for checking this video out. I'm really happy that you found your way here. As I said, I'm a beginner, uh, beginner sewer and this is in no way a video of um, instructions or tutorial. This is just me sitting down, showing you things that I have made and um, sharing things that I have learned in my sewing through making mistakes and um, exploring different things. So it um, hopefully will be something that is um, inspirational and fun to watch. Or, you know, maybe something to just have in the background as you're cutting your fabric or something like that. It's the first time I'm doing a video in this format like this. Um, so let's just see how we go. Um, I'm quite excited. I am going to tell you though, that this is the second time I'm recording this because as I was uploading my videos to my computer previously, I realized that the whole first half of the video that I had recorded had not saved. So I'm going to do this first part again, and then I have recorded the second half of it um, already. And I'll make it all um, hopefully okay in editing. But I'll, um, I just want to show you what I have been sewing. So let's move on to that. You can find me and all of my making on Instagram. I am Rose Hip Island there. If you are a knitter and you have a Ravelry account, you can find me on Ravelry as Rose Hip Island as well. And I have a group on Facebook, also Rose Hip Island. And um, yes, I'm happy for any messages to come my way if you have any questions or anything you want to let me know. I do have a business where I sell hand dyed yarn and that you can find by going to rosehipisland.com. I have a few things that I have made for my daughters. I have an eight year old and an almost 12 year old and I have also made a few things for myself. I have purely been making garments out of jersey and knits and um, that's what I'm focusing on at the moment. That's where I have found that I want to um, put my time into at the moment because knits and jersey seems to be the garments that we use the most and will be the most useful for us if I make. And I have tried out a few different patterns and garments, all making them on my standard sewing machine. But recently I got an overlocker and that has totally changed things for me really. And I've been having so much fun. I'll start with um, showing some things that I have made for my daughter. Uh, a pattern that I have made previously, and I got this from um, just a second hand shop. I've made this dress here, but I've made it as a 90. 
I made it before and it came out really big and wide. So I, when I had my overlocker, this was the first thing that I made just to try it out because it's a very basic pattern and I had some um, inexpensive fabric in my stash of things that I have picked up at different sales and um, at, you know in secondhand shops and stuff and um, so I've, I've made that and I tried to make it a little bit slimmer than I have previously so this is it And you can see I've made it on my overlocker and I've made neckbands a few times now so I'm very happy with how they come out. I have learned from some YouTube videos that I've watched that if you make the band about 80% of the length of, of the neck, um, length, so, yes the, the length of the neck, um, it, it for me has always worked really well. Um, I did the twin stitch, the uh, twin needle stitching on my regular sewing machine for the finishing. And this is where I was not happy. And this was where I was trying to figure out how to make things to make them look a bit more professional and nice in the finishing. Um, I wasn't happy with this because it curls up. But it's perfectly fine for a 90. I moved on from this later and I'll show you that soon. But first I'll show you. I was a little bit obsessed um, by making undies. I just really wanted to make undies from scratch and I don't know why. And I watched a lot of YouTube um, videos about it. I looked at different patterns and finally I decided I was go just going to make my own pattern out of um, a pair of my... Uh, eight year olds undies and uh, so I just drafted my own pattern and I made a pair of undies and these are so um yeah they're not they're not great but I was still so happy when I had made them I just made them in an evening um and it, I was just it was just a way of overcoming that it felt impossible to do it but I actually showed myself that I could do it so I just made it up and there's so many mistakes here I've got you know this fabric is inside out these bands here are not wide enough so the inside shows on the outside and you know they still they still work as a pair of undies but they're really not they're not great um but it was a really helpful exercise to learn things and to just overcome that um overcome that thought of that I couldn't do it after these I knew I could do it and um, yeah I have since did, done a little bit more exploring <laughs> making undies not for myself but for my my eight-year-old so I, I made that set that was a bit fun none of them are great but you know it works for something to have at home another pattern that I have used before for my daughters is this one quick sew pattern 2079 it's also an old one i think i picked it up from a second hand shop and i've made this dress but with the short sleeves and i made them a couple of times and i realized that it's quite wide in the fit and very short so i've adjusted it a, a bit for every time that i've made it and i had some really nice fabric that I bought on sale and it's this one and I made the dress and I made it a little bit um, slimmer and a little bit longer for eight-year-old and I think this was the first thing that I was just really really pleased with the finishing it's a very you know simple look nothing you know nothing fantasy about it at all but it just looks like a proper dress um you know it almost looks like something i could have picked up from a shop if you don't look too closely <laughs> so again i'm very happy with the neck band that i did there i haven't sewn it down and um, just left it like that but the difference that i did here compared to this one where i did the twin needle stitch very 
close to the edge of the fabric, the folded fabric, was that I did that seam a bit further in. And I just got a much better look doing that way. The same down here, which was great. And I should um, show you that actually before I did on this one, I did it on as a trial on a dress that I had made myself. This is a dress that I made, same fabric as this, as what I'm wearing. And let's see if I find it. This is the pattern, McCall's M7313. So I made it with the short sleeves and I made this once or twice before and it was fine. I really liked the fit, but I didn't like the finishing of it. And I had done the finishing around the neck and on the sleeves and again, right on the edge of the fabric, which I was not super happy with how that ended up. But then I was going to do the skirt um, the hemming of the skirt and I had left it because I wanted to find a good way of doing it and um, this is where I try to do it a bit further in from the folded fabric and also I got a stretch twin needle which I had heard someone someone mentioned it on a crafty class that I watched and they said that that's what they used so I got one of those and I was so happy with the result, even though this was the first time I did it. So it was not great because I didn't think about how far in I, or, or how much fabric I had on the back folded in. So, and it was a bit uneven. So you'll see that along here, I did not always catch that fabric. And yes, it's just a bit of a disaster on the inside. And that's going to eventually, you know, show when I wear it. But for now, it's been fine to just sort of wear it at home. Um, and I made, I adjusted it a little bit in, in the shaping. I made it a little bit tighter. So I was very happy with that dress. But that was when I first did that way of finishing figured out that that was the way to do it and um, I did it on this dress and I was so happy. So when I had made one of them, I thought, oh, I need, a, this was fun. This works. I want to do it again and change it up again a little bit. So I made another one in this yellow fabric that I had. Um, and it's not perfect, but I'm very happy with it. I was only going to make it in the yellow. And then my daughter was with me in my studio when I made it and she wanted to add a band of a different color in the waist. So I had this aqua color and I just sort of cut out this piece freehand um, to put that in. And I thought if, because I did that, I wanted to have that contrast, the neck band as well. And then I thought I'll try to do it on the sleeves. So I did that and I thought I'll do it at the hem of the skirt as well. So I did that and it worked out really well. Um, because I did it all freehand, I didn't think about the, the width of these. I'm happy with the sleeves and I even um, sewed down the overlocking part with that, um, I'm not sure if it's a cover stitch or what it is called just that finishing of having the the seam and uh, was very happy with that the only issue um was that this band here i didn't make it wide enough so it does come up a little bit sometimes but apart from that i'm very happy with it so um and i made this a little bit longer again and i think it's great I'm very happy with it it's very nice so they are the the dresses that I have made um, for my my daughter. And then I wanted to um, make a pair of uh, pants for the first time. I had just got my overlocker and I have this book here that I've had for a few years or a couple of years. I got it when I, I figured that sewing with jersey fabrics was the way to go for me. That would be most useful for me. 
and I've found this book a really good resource for general information about what stitches to use and needles, what to think about when you sew with um, knit fabrics and stretchy fabrics. But I never really used, no, I never used a pattern from here. So I decided I want to try and make a pair of pants because I had made um, the dresses and things for my daughter. So I wanted to make something for me and I wanted to try to make a pair of pants. So I decided to try the Monsal Lounge pants from this book. And there's some variations of them, but I just wanted to make the plain pants, sort of like a slim fit jogger pant. Um, you can do pockets or not. I decided to not do pockets and I decided to just make them out of a lightweight jersey that I had in my stash. So I tried that. So I made these pants when I had just got my overlocker and I just spent an evening just going a bit crazy. I had this organic um, cotton jersey in my stash um, that had cost me not much at all, so I didn't worry too much. And I followed the pattern and make, made a pair of pyjama pants. This was the first time I made cuffs like this. I haven't used these, um, so I still have threads and stuff. And um, there's a lot of um, adjustments I'd like to do to these to make them better ne next time. But I just sort of... Um, sort of um i'm understanding how things work as i do them so you know i can't really do anything about it at the time but for the next time i can so the first time i made those cuffs it was all on my um overlocker the waistband is not not great in how i've um got that in it's a bit it's not wide enough i think and i probably should have had some seams here to make it sit a bit better um but i just didn't have the patience i just wanted to get it done so these are you know a little bit oversized nice comfy uh, pajama pants so i was again thrilled that i could make pants and, and who cares what they look like really when they're for you know pajama pants and being at home and being relaxed type pants but I was still um, you know sort of impressed with myself here the waist the elastic in here has uh, turned a bit so that's something I have to adjust maybe I'll put a seam in here to just make it sit a bit better but yes that's them Maybe hard to see. I don't think I'll be putting these on to show you. <laughs> but that was my first adventures in sewing pants. Then back to kids on this side. <laughs> um, I got this pattern. And um, the new look in the 6649 sized for tweens easy just for knits pattern. And I made these in a size 10, also in some fabric that I had in my stash. And here they are. So they're similar, but these pants have pockets. Again, I was just impressed with myself. And I think first I thought, oh, maybe I'll just leave the pockets out. And I thought, no, I'll just try it because I'm sure I'll learn something. And, um, you know, then I know I can do it and I might not want to do it again because I don't know if it's necessary or if the time is worth it. But I did it and I know I can do it, which is just great. And we've got the waist in a bit better here. I've just got the whole hair a bit at a, a wrong point. But these are, again, just sort of comfy pants. This is a, I think it's called a Terry knit or terry fabric it has that sort of sweatshirt inside but it's still very thin 
I would like to find fabric like this that is thicker. Um, I, I find it actually hard to find the more, I think it's called sweat, sweat knit, sweatshirt knit fabric, I'm not sure. But I've found it hard to find it in, um, in cotton. I think you can find some in polycotton, polyester, but the cotton ones I found is harder to get. So yes, they're the pants and they're a bit big for my eight year old. Uh, and I think maybe a bit too small for my soon 12 year old, uh, but they'll come in use eventually. But now I think I'll make a pair for my, um, my older daughter. I just need to find some good fabric for it. But at least I know when I find a fabric, I know that I have a pattern um, that I can use. So they were my second pair of pants and uh, yeah, oh, it's very nice and drapey um, fabric. I have more of this, so I'll be able to make, I don't think I'll make a matching jumper. That would be a bit crazy, but I'll be able to make something, I think. So that's those. Then I think I only have a couple of things left. I continued on in my adventures of sewing underwear. <laughs> and after a lot of searching, I decided to get, to actually pay for a pattern for undies and not just try to make my own. So I got these um, Whitney knickers from Wicked Patterns. And Wicked Patterns is a, a woman, I think she's in Queensland. She's somewhere in Australia, I believe. And she has a web page and she has an Etsy shop where she sells her patterns. I think she might also have a fabric shop. I'm not sure. But I had a look at these and I read some reviews and I thought that they would um, be what I was after. And this pattern I found really good. It has really good instructions and, um, you know, be suitable for a beginner, definitely. And it's basically doing what I had done myself. Um, but now I, you know, having a, a pattern with sizes and measurements just it was really handy. So I made a pair of those that have actually been used. So they're, I think, in the wash. And I, I made a second pair. And they're not perfect because I had some issues with the cutting out. So I had to adjust to... <laughs> to get things to to um, fit together um, but that's those and you can see it's I haven't done any of the um, seaming here to hold the overlock edges down I think I'll get my daughter to try them first and see how they work if it's if it's necessary uh, if it is I'll just do the the seaming that's fine so these are just plain turquoise again in the cotton jersey fabric and the reason I made these was actually because I also got this pattern recently pajamas for the entire family and I made this nighty I made it the largest kid size and sort of figured it would fit one of my girls I think now it's probably for my youngest and I had this really nice organic cotton jersey with these um, flying horses. I don't think they're unicorns, flying horses. So I made that nighty and I used that um, aqua um, fabric as the contrast. The first time I did a raglan and that was really fun. And I think it came out really well. It had the finishing like that on the sleeves. And I still have this here to sew. I'm a little bit hesitant, a bit scared, I guess you could say, because it has a curve along the bottom edge. And I'm a bit worried how that's going to come out when I sew it but I'm going to set up my sewing machine here with the twin needle and and do it I've got it already I've um, pressed it and everything 
to be able to do it so that's still to come i think this will be an easter present maybe um so i have that and yes of course then i have the, the matching undies <laughs> to go with it and i yes very pleased with this one again i just it still looks you know homemade you can see here it looks very handmade but i think it just looks like it's uh, nice and sharp and looks comfortable and everything so that's a more recent make that i'm still working on um so because i want to give this as an easter present to my youngest daughter i figured i need to do something for my older daughter as well and i do still have um some of both of these fabrics i probably have less than a meter left of this one so i can't make another 90 i have quite a bit of this left um but i think what i might do and i don't know if i'll use i think i can make a shorts with this pattern and then maybe just a plain t-shirt so i might just make a short and t-shirt pj set for her using the same fabrics but maybe do the plain t-shirt and the flying horses <laughs> shorts i don't know i'll come up with something i think that's sort of something i will do this weekend i think it would be fun to do that i'll show you um some other plans that i have um oh well one other plan that i have that is going to be for my older daughter I decided to make the pants for my youngest like i showed you and i also wanted to try um the top in this um, pattern and i figured if i've tried one wow. of both uh, in two different sizes then i can um you know do the other sizes if if they turn out to be a good pattern so i've actually cut out the pieces for the top and i think i did maybe a size 14 and this is the pattern uh, this is the fabric that i used again this is a one of those terry cottons i'm not sure what they're called um but it's all again a very drapey one and quite thin so we'll see if if that's going to work out but i have that cut and ready to sew so that's also coming up And then the next thing that I have been uh, working on and trying out um, is just making myself a plain t-shirt that fits well. <laughs> That's been, um, again, something that has challenged me and I wanted to just keep trying until I found something that I was happy with. And I found a pattern online that was free i have i should say this i have made some t-shirts before that um my mum had a pattern that was basically just two pieces a front piece and a back piece that you just sew together and they don't have any sleeves separate sleeves and that's been working fine i just wanted to have something that goes down a bit more over my um arms because here in tasmania the sun is just so strong that I really like to cover up my shoulders a fair bit. Um, but I did, I've, I found a pattern for this one. And it was a free pattern on a blog called Eye Candy Handmade. And this is the Fun Summit Tea pattern. And it is similar to the one that I have made previously. That is just the front and back. But this one has the neck band. And it has this fun detail of that the back comes up here a bit you can see this is the fabric that i used for my daughter's dress so this was just a remnant of that i just wanted to try try this one um i actually I, I made another one before this one i'll show you that soon um so with this one i used the skills that i have learned with making the neck band and doing the finishing on the bottom but because of how the pattern is it was still just um that sort of basic finishing on the sleeve um 
I did this as my So Frugal 2022 challenge, which was a challenge I found when I was searching for different things on YouTube that was sewing related. Turned out that that challenge was for March and the challenge was make something out of a fabric from your stash and a free pattern. This was a free pattern and it was the remnant from my daughter's dress that was something I had in my stash. So this one came out nice. I was happy with it. It still is not really the style that I like. It, the sleeves are a little bit too short. It's quite fitted. Um, but it's it would be great for having under things. Before I made this one, I made um, sort of like a, a test one. And the t-shirt on the on the blog I think it is or the website has two different fabrics on the front and the back and I really like the look of that so when I first made that pattern this is what I made so it has a spotted back and a flowery front so this was the first one I made and um, I think oh yes this um, so I made the sleeves the same way, neckband the same. But with this one, I had my overlocker and I had heard of the blind stitch and that you could make nice edgings or finishing with the blind stitch. So I tried that on this one and I just, I, I can't get it right. Or it's maybe it's just that I don't like the way it looks. But I get this effect. I know now that it might be that I, I have to be much more on the edge of the folded fabric when I do the sewing. If you've done the blind stitch before, maybe you understand what I mean. But I just don't think that I have my machine, the foot and the needle set up right in relation to where my fabric sits when I do the sewing. So I got that. And I know this is an effect that sometimes you get that on garments and that sort of is meant to look good. But I, I, um, I don't really like the look of it i don't know it might look nicer if it was oh different fabric different thread i don't know i just didn't think it was right for this and I, i've i try this stitch over and over again on all these little swatches and i couldn't get it right um and it was actually after i did this that i discovered that i could do this instead which i like so much better i just had had this idea that i wanted to do the whole thing on my overlocker now i realize having my sewing machine for some of the finishing is the best <laughs> the best way for me so that was that one uh, i really enjoyed this fabric it was a remnant that i got in one of those remnant baskets i don't have a lot of it i have hardly any of it left now this was a really old remnant that i had in my stash don't know if I'll ever wear this in public. I might just be making myself sleeping t-shirts. I don't know. So, yeah, that was that one. So, I've been, yes, on um, on the, oh, I've been on a lookout to find the perfect t-shirt. So, after I did those, I actually also got this pattern. It's a Birda Easy uh, for jersey knits 6059 it is just to make a simple t-shirt and i try that and here it is and this is a cotton linen fabric that i found also as a remnant i really like it so i made the t-shirt all according to the pattern here it is it looks a bit dark because it has the the dark on this side and I think it's sort of showing through I have finishing like that and like that so I'm very happy with the finishing and how it came out but I think I made it a size too big for me because it doesn't sit quite right I just feel like these seams are sitting too far out on my shoulders um but it's 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 fine and I might try to make the pattern again with one size down. After this one, I thought I have I have these dresses that I really like the top. I really like how 
the sleeves set on me and how the neckline and how they um, set on my body. So I had the idea that I would use this top half of the pattern. You see there's a seam here. So it has a top part and the sleeves. I thought I'll use that but instead of making it um, go in to the waist I'll just make it straight down from the sleeves um, and change the neckline by putting in the neckband and that's this t-shirt that I'm wearing. That's what I did. I used that same fabric again because I had a little bit over and I was just playing to see what would happen. So the sleeves are from that dress pattern. This pattern here from this one. So they're the same sleeves and the, the top or the body of the t-shirt is the top half of the dress that has been um, just gone straight down from under the arms and just um, made longer. And then I made a, a neckband. And it turns out by, that by making this t-shirt myself, I think I have found the perfect t-shirt pattern. Uh, so now I, I just tried it out, but now I've actually made the pattern pieces for this so I can do it again easily. And uh, I'll try it with a little bit of a different fabric and see how I go. But yes, um, super happy. I got there in the end. I did. <laughs> and, and I have learned so much by making these different garments, by using different patterns. I've used patterns, free patterns from blogs. I have used um, easy patterns from... Um, you know, like easy patterns like these. I have used more complicated patterns like that. I have used patterns from books. Um, I have tried different finishing methods, different fabrics, but still mostly just different knit fabrics. Um, and I think I'm, I'm doing okay and I'm still excited about it. So I still have projects on the go. As I told you, I'm making a jumper out of this fabric for my daughter. The other thing that I have cut out and ready to go is this dress. So this is the new look N6650. And this is also an easy just for knits pattern. I have a dress that looks like this, a blue with stripes, and I really enjoy wearing it. And I think it's an easy to wear um, garment for work. So I wanted to try to make my own. And a fabric that I got recently was this one. So I've got that dress cut out in this fabric and that's uh, Next, next to be sewn up. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, well, now I feel like I have done quite a bit of talking. And um, I have shown you most things. Oh, I have another fun thing that I need to show you as well. When I was going crazy and just sort of making things up after, after this dress here, when I just sort of added added pieces of fabric as I went I decided that oh I'm going to try that and maybe make a t-shirt using that pattern and um, I had this fabric here as a remnant and I only had a tiny little bit left of it because actually I made a t-shirt for myself and I don't have that here but also using this um, I think it was this pattern I used I think so. yeah so I don't know where I have it now, actually. I might have worn it and it is in the wash. So I had a little bit of this. I had this orange and I decided to make this t-shirt. Um, so that is that same 
it is this pattern, but I've only used the top bit of it, made it a little bit slimmer again. Um, and then I just, I just, I think, I don't know how much width I used for this one, but I just, I think I cut whatever length I had of, of that piece of fabric. Um, and I made this. And um, it's really fun. It's a little bit wide and it's a little bit short. So I don't know that it ever will be worn. But again, I learned by, by making it. This is a bit funny that I got this upside down. And now I have no more of this fabric left. But I thought it was fun. It was fun. Maybe it will go to um, charity. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun to make um, and I'm so happy that I've come to that stage where I can just have fun and just make things and make things up as I go um yes yeah, so you you've you've seen the craziness that I have been focused on lately you know what's coming up um of course I'm just you know I'm still doing my knitting and my spinning and those sort of things but sewing has really been great and having collected these really good tools over the past few years having a stash of good quality material has just meant so much for me to be able to be creative and um, finally taking the time to make things happen so that's that's been great um i don't know if this will be the one and only sewing video I do, or if there will be more. Um, I just felt like I had so much of it that I didn't want to cram it all into my normal diary videos. Um, so I hope, I hope that me showing you things and talking through my mistakes and things like that has been um, useful or just, you know, Hilarious, I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, I have really enjoyed when I have watched um, people on YouTube when they talk about what they make and things they've discovered and things like that. So hopefully this could just be one of those pieces of inspiration that's out there for people that are interested. Uh, Yes, I'm going to, you know, continue on with all the sewing and making and all the other creative things that I get up to. If you have enjoyed this video, please thumbs up. And if you're interested, please subscribe. There, you know, be more videos coming. And uh, any comments, feedback, um, you know, tell me about your your sewing what do you like to sew and do you have any um anything you'd like me to know about that i don't know any great youtube videos or blogs any great pattern makers any great sources for fabric let me know in the comments um i would really enjoy that and that's 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 all for this time Thank you so much for joining me and for letting me uh, <laughs> feel the, the past little while with all of my making. And um, I hope that you can feel that I, I'm, I feel really enthusiastic and um, excited about my sewing and my, my making. And who knows, eventually I might move on from knitting with jersey <laughs> t-shirts and dresses and move on to something else. I do have um, visions of making quilts and other things, but we'll take it one thing at a time, I think. Thank you so much for, for watching. Thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I hope that I have uh, been able to put some inspiration out there and that it's useful in any way. So I hope to see you again in a little while. Until then.
take care and stay safe. Bye.